Hello viewers! Have you ever had a random body lying around and you just don't know what to do with it? Well, I've come up with several fun ways to hide the evidence. Remember kids, do what you want, but don't get caught. Now, my first technique... Lucy, what the hell are you doing? Um... We talked about this. You can't have your own segment. This is my channel. Now get out! Okay... Sorry about that. Um, she keeps wanting to do her own thing. And obviously, I mean, she can't because she's a really bad influence. And I mean, I keep telling her! Right, right. Hello, lovely people. Despite that minor setback, I actually did have something to talk about today. I'm a person of many qualities, most of which are not redeeming. And this includes poor hand-eye coordination, the ability to trip over flat surfaces as well as my own feet, not being able to see walls and other structures in time, and being a constant hazard to myself and others. To put it simply, I'm clumsy. I always have been, and I always will be. Now, I don't know if clumsiness is a genetic trait, but I wouldn't be surprised considering most of my family has a lot of the same deficiencies. However, I do something that's fairly unique compared to my other family members. I'm prone to running into solid objects. <laughs> Out of everyone else in my house, I probably do it the most. I think running into sliding glass doors is actually fairly common, but I actually run into those less than I do, like, solid doors. Don't ask me why that is, I don't have a definitive answer. But I think it's because my brain hates me. Case in point? It's not just doors and walls I forget about, I also fail to acknowledge... to name a few. All of this, yet I still always wonder why I wake up with random bruises in the morning. <sighs> Ow. Apparently, I hurt myself so often, I can't even pinpoint which bruise came from which event. Where'd that one come from? Where'd that one come from? And even though I know it's not a good idea, I always feel the need to... I don't know why I do it. Maybe I subconsciously think that it'll help me remember whatever it is that caused it. Nope, yet I still do it anyway. But I swear the amount I get on my legs alone could be turned into some sort of abstract connect the dots. It looks kind of like a cat. Well, that's open to interpretation now, isn't it? But to a certain extent, my constantly getting hurt makes me a little bit more resilient against pain. But something that is always just as painful, no matter how many times I do it, is stubbing my toe. You okay? It's... It's just a... It's just a flesh wound! Oh. I don't even see any blood! Uh, just, just, just go on without me! I'm not even going anywhere! Uh, uh. Yep, that's pretty much what happens every time I do it. I also have very little control over my limbs. I'm looking at you, you traitorous feet. Not only do my feet keep tripping me up, but my arms also have a mind of their own. Don't look at me. I'm not the one doing it. Uh-huh. Sure. But my arms tend to, um, flail. 
and it's the worst when I'm talking excitedly about something, and right at that moment, someone decides to walk behind me. Well, then there was this giant- Oh, my eye! Sorry. But this means I also tend to throw things unexpectedly. Oh, my eye! Sorry. But my biggest achievement as a klutz is probably the swim team incident. Before I begin, I just want to warn anybody who's squeamish about blood and needles and stitches and extreme embarrassment should probably turn off either the sound or the captions right about now, but I'll tell you when to come back in. Back when I was in middle school, aka the worst three years of my life, I was on swim team. I know, sports, right? <laughs> and most days were really boring, you know, just swimming as many laps as we were told to do. But every now and then, usually right after a meet or something, we'd get to play games for the day. Games like water polo, Marco polo, wearing polo shirts. <laughs> that wasn't funny. But on this fateful day, we were playing a game called Pigeon. So the point of this game is that one person is the storyteller and everyone else has to actually do the work. So we all had to stand with our backs to the water. And the point of the game was, is that when the storyteller said the word pigeon in their story, everyone else would have to jump into the pool, touch the bottom, swim back up, and pull themselves up and stand up. The last one to do so is the next storyteller. The incident happened when I was one of the people actually jumping into the water. What you're actually supposed to do is since your back is to the water, you're supposed to turn around and jump a safe distance away from the wall. But of course, people being as competitive as they are, started to just jump backwards. And this method was working perfectly. I just didn't calculate how far away I needed to jump back from the wall. Let me remind you that this is a solid concrete pool. You can probably see where I'm going with this. The storyteller was telling the story, and then they looked into the tree and saw a pigeon! And of course everyone jumped into the pool. I, uh, hit my chin on the edge of the solid concrete pool. Very, very painful. Now, I knew I'd hit my chin, but I had, you know, bumps and scrapes and stuff like that before. And I was still so competitive to actually get out the water again. So I didn't know the full extent of the damage done until I got back out of the water and everyone else was freaking out. Blood everywhere. It was just, it was, it was really bad. It was really gross. And so basically all they could do at the time was give me one of those like giant band-aids and stick it on my chin. They had to call my mom to come get me early. So of course by the time she gets there, like the whole bandage is red. And I got taken to urgent care, which if you know urgent care well, it's not very urgent. I had to wait over an hour before anyone would even see me. <laughs> my mom though, knowing how squeamish I was about needles, kept trying to come for me and say, oh, well maybe they'll just glue it or whatever. I only found out recently that she knew the whole time I'd have to have stitches. <laughs> Thanks mom. <laughs> so waiting, 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 and finally, they'll see me. And as soon as I get into the doctor's room and he takes a look at it and he's like, oh, yeah, that's definitely gonna need stitches. <sighs> really? Oh no. And I'm like, I really need to use the bathroom. I then proceeded to hide in the bathroom for about another hour. <laughs> I really, really do not like needles. So finally they coaxed me back out. And luckily before I went and hid, they had put numbing stuff on my chin, like a numbing pad or whatever, and it stayed on there. So my chin was very, very numb by the time I finally got back into the doctor's room. So of course they, you know, put more numbing stuff into my chin. They had to cover my eyes and pretty much everything else so I would not see anything because <laughs> I was that much of a baby about it. And then I got stitches. I think I got about nine. But of course I get back to school and I had a couple friends that were on swim team but they weren't there that day. So of course they asked me, what happened to your chin? And I was just like, you should have been at swim practice if you really wanted to know. But yeah, it left me with a nice little scar underneath my chin somewhere around here. You probably can't even see it anyway. Okay, story's over. But if there's one good way to look at all this, it's that I'd probably be good at slapstick comedy. <laughs> I think this is a good time to stop the video. I think I've embarrassed myself way too much for one day. By the way, I was totally lying earlier. What are you talking about? Ow. <clears throat> oh, that.
but hopefully you guys out there are more fortunate than I am. But may the rest of your week be as graceful as possible, and I will see you next time. Bye. Don't worry, I'll be back.